Welcome back to the second module of uh, Knowledge and Data. I'm Stefan and I'm uh, going to present a little recap of module one, what we've done in the last week, and uh, to give you an overview of what the plan is for the next week, the module two. So what we've done so far is that we introduced some theory, mostly about uh, the fact that data reuse is very difficult under the current circumstances when we have databases that are organized in a relational way um, and that knowledge graphs can be very useful because they help us making knowledge explicit and integrated into the data structure. If we want to put this to machine level so that it becomes uh, uh, possible to have predictable inference when we represent data in, an, in, in, a, in a machine way, then uh, formal systems are very useful. And we discussed a number of former systems but came out to the simple knowledge graph logic, which was a representation language for knowledge graphs. In practice, uh, what you did was to do some symbolic manipulation and propositional logic, which is probably or was in, your, in the experience what I realized relatively painful. And the same holds for the knowledge graphs, um, where you also did some manipulations into different syntaxes and so forth. Now we're dealing with uh, uh, knowledge graphs on the web. And for this, we will also use some slightly more uh, advanced technology, which makes it far easier to manipulate this information. The last thing was to access some information from the knowledge graphs. And again, we will use a uh, worked out and far more advanced technology that makes it far easier for you to work with this. So what is the plan for this week? The plan is that we will look at the theory of data on the web. Uh, argue why this is difficult now and why it has a huge potential still. If we manage to get all the data somehow available that is around, then we can really have a huge impact in science, in journalism, in uh, society, in general, in companies and so forth. Still, this is a technological and societal challenge, which we will discuss. But fortunately, there has been an initiative the past 20 years, I would say, which was called the Semantic Web or Linked Data or um, uh, Web of Data, and uh, where a number of tools have been developed and languages such as RDF, which is the language that we will discuss in this module. So RDF is a data model for knowledge graphs on the web, and you can access information from um, the web or a local database that is modeled in RDF using the Sparkle query language. And this is what uh, uh, Klaas and I are going to introduce this week. In the practical, you will have to programmatically manipulate and query RDF data. Maybe you are afraid that this is more difficult than what you have done last week. And I'm pretty sure that this is not the case because now we use a professional library which takes care of all the, the, the difficulties of uh, manipulating the symbolic data when it's represented as a string. So, I trust that this will be far more easily doable for most of you. So uh, get going with the second module. Good luck.